Hi there, beautiful divine awakening souls. This is Nala Nguyen, your host for 3D to 5D consciousness. This channel is about helping you to expand your consciousness, getting you ready to become your 5D galactic being, and as well as a spot for galactic news. I want to thank you for tuning this broadcast. If you're new here, a big welcome. Thank you to all the kind and loyal subscribers that tune in regularly and share my work. And also a big shout out to the generous uh, viewers that donate to my channel. A big shout out to you guys as well too. Uh, without your love and support, um, my work won't be able to continue. So I want to show my appreciation, my gratitude towards the generosity and your kindness. Before I dive into talking about today's talking points, I want to share a couple updates, which is um, sometimes I have some issues uploading to either Odyssey or BitChute or even sometimes UG Tube. I know for the last couple of weeks during this Mercury retrograde, I, I had some issues uploading to UG Tube. So if you are my audience member from UG Tube and you haven't seen me post in three weeks, you just have to go on the other platforms, either Odyssey or you to view the videos you can find the links in the description area or go to my website www.3d5d.com the other update i want to share with you is that the c60 uh company in france uh the the vendor that i have partnered up with they have just informed me that the government is going after c60 suppliers so out of the blue the government's going after these manufacturers of c60 olive oil I can see why they're doing this because the, the olive oil, the C60 olive oil, it's very effective at removing heavy metals. It's very effective at removing toxins. And it's also 172 times higher in antioxidants than vitamin C. So as you can see, the combination of these three benefits would make it a perfect target for the government to go after this product to remove it from the shelves so that consumers can't get access to this uh, miracle product to remove the toxins and the, um, the nanobot technology that you know that you get when you take the mark of the beast shot. This would be the only reason why I can see the French government going out of nowhere going after this uh, food supplement because if it's, it's literally a, a natural health product. It's olive oil and carbon 60 carbon 60 is naturally occurring in nature you know it's, it's naturally occurring in nature they actually they have to actually extract the carbon c60 using solvents but it's oven dried everything's removed the 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 carbon 60 has also gone through a lot of research and uh, there's rat studies that prove the effectiveness of carbon 60 of actually extending life in rats so there's a lot of scientific research behind C60, but they've made some excuse to shut these companies down. So if you're in France and you want to uh, protest, if you want to resist what's happening, I suggest you share this information as far as possible because this product really does remove a lot of, you know, toxicity, um, heavy metals from people's body, which helps them to recover faster. Over, we are bombarded all the time with a lot of heavy metals and toxins. And this is one of the free products on the market that does a very effective job of doing this. And now they're trying to take this product away from the, from the French people. So I urge people, if you're living in France right now, you, may, you need to sound the alarm and resist and try to keep this product on the market. I mean, it's really for your own health and for your own the health of your family because this is one of the few products that has very little side effects. You know, animals can take it, children can take it. It's very, very safe. This is the reason why I'm very upset with this news and I want to share this to the to the uh, collective conscious so that way you are protesting, you're resisting, and you don't allow them to take this amazing product off the market. Okay? Now, the other talking point I'm going to go into is there is a lot of people sharing uh stories from real raw news okay i want to make a public statement on this because i think there's too many people sharing these type of stories and the the public statement i want to say is before you buy into these stories you need to question number one where are the sources where they're getting this information from the second thing i want people to question is where's the proof where's the evidence people are just believing stories that they are reading without asking for proof evidence or 
the the source of the so of the so-called intel and if you don't ask for proof and evidence and the source of these stories then what you're believing in are conjectures they're just stories for entertainment and people are circulating these stories and buying into them like they are actually real intel or this is actually something that's happened i'm like well is it verifiable no is it irrefutable no it's just someone's opinion it's just it's just someone's narration of what they think has taken place if you can't prove any of this stuff why are you wasting your time on these type of uh, conjectures. I think it's a complete waste of people's time to read it and to share it because it's dropping your vibration when you're buying to deception. So truth will elevate your vibration, raise your consciousness and get you to escape this matrix. But when you're buying to lies and you can't distinguish between uh, fact versus fiction, this is a big area that you need to work on on your discernment because then they can write up any story they can say anything they want to say and you just buy into it because you you haven't sufficiently developed that third eye and develop your psychic abilities to be able to read these frequencies that it's not based on anything it's not based on evidence basically what you want to look for is whatever you're buying into you need to have solid evidence and evidence is verifiable and irrefutable and is matter of fact it's not an opinion, it's not a conjecture, it's not something you can discuss where is a difference in perspective, is a difference in opinion. It is a matter of fact, it's cold hard facts. This is what happened, this is what, this is what took place, bam, bam, bam. This is what you want to look for and uh, the stories that come from this website, all I can say is that none of the information is verifiable, it's, it's, it's not irrefutable and it's not a matter of fact they're just opinions and they're just stories okay so i want to share that commentary so that way people don't spend too much time just reading stories just for so they have some type of hope you know you want to look for evidence so that way you are buying into something that's actually based on truth and that's going to help you raise your vibration and put you on the correct timeline okay now let's dive into talking about the talking points. There is a lot of commotion happening in Poland right now. Last week, Poland's highest court ruled that the national constitution had primacy over EU laws. The EU is obviously not happy with this type of ruling because Poland is trying to uh, maintain its sovereignty. But you can't really do that if you're a part of the EU. If you're part of the EU and you're accepting EU money, EU support, you have to be under their rule, you know, under their thumb, basically. Um, a lot of the population in Poland is in favor of the EU. Poland is very much dependent on internal market, and they have been receiving a lot of EU funding for this COVID-19 recovery fund. So it, it appears that Poland is staying in the EU because of money reason, but they're not really happy with the laws and the regulation that they have to implement, which is in conflict with Poland's uh, national constitution. So I'm gonna keep my eye on the situation and see what's going to happen. There is talk of Poland wanted to leave EU, but it's not really finalized. It doesn't seem to be very, it doesn't seem to be very solid right now. It's just, but the fact that the highest court in Poland made this ruling is sending a clear message to the EU, okay? So moving on to the next talking point. Uh, in Texas right now, they, the government has just passed new laws and regulations that it is banning any entity from mandating this mark of the beast shot. This is wonderful news for Texans and for Americans because for, a lot of people right now are not very happy with their state and they want to move and they want to go into other um, states that have more freedom and that it is allowing people to exercise their god-given free will you know this is what they're what these satanists are doing is a violation of universal law which is a violation of your free will so the texas governor it has made a law and put it in place that none of these organizations can mandate the mark of the beast shot so if you are in america and you want to relocate and you don't know where to relocate texas is probably a really good bet however you have to be prepared that because it, ha it has one of the highest uh you know gdp it produces a lot of money for that state um, a lot of people own rifles and guns and it produces a lot of electricity for that state 
it is Texas is a target for a lot of attacks. So if you plan on making moves to Texas because of the freedom and because of the security that Texas provide, just be aware that um, it is a target for like weather attacks or that type of attack. Okay. Now moving on to the next talking point. Let's talk about this mandate hoax. This term mandate is really a big hoax because according to the Black Laws Dictionary, it requires the individual's consent and voluntary participation in order for this mandate to be effective. So I want to share with you that clip of a woman reading the actual definition of mandate so that way the audience can understand what these vocabulary actually mean according to the Black Laws Dictionary. So here's the clip. Okay, today we're going to learn about the legal definition of the word mandate. We are in the Black's Law Dictionary, 11th edition. So today, California just mandated vaccinations for all school children ages 12 and older. Under Roman and civil law, this is what we're working under right now, a written command given by a principal to an agent, so by like a governor, specifically a commission or a contract by which one person, like the governor, requests someone, the mandatory, which is the public, to perform some service gratuitously, which means voluntarily, the commission becoming effective when the mandatory agrees. This means that a mandate only becomes mandatory when you follow through with what they want you to do. If you do not agree to it, if you do not do what they're asking you to do, if you do not want to do what they're asking you to do, because it's a request, it's gratuitously doing what they say, then you are not uh, obligated under the mandate. So now that's the first deception that we have uncovered, that this word mandate actually has no type of authority to impose this type of a medical tyranny on people, it actually requires your individual consent and compliance to, in order for this, for this mandate to be effective. The other hoax I want to share with you is that I'm actually going to share a clip from Newsmax. This is not a news company I usually uh, like to share, but in this particular news clip, I think the information is important. And in this news clip, they were saying that this mandate is a, it's a complete scam because the Biden administration actually didn't make it into a law. There was no votes on it. It was just basically a press conference. You know, it was just an announcement. It was just a press conference they made. And just from that press conference, a lot of these companies, these airline companies, as well as the military, uh, as well as hospitals are implementing this mandate when it's actually not a law and there was no votes on it. There hasn't been anything legal to actually substantiate this, this mandate. It's just a press conference. They just made an announcement and now everyone just bought into it. So here's a news clip. We're going to continue to implement the law, which uh, the President of the United States has the ability, the authority, the legal authority to do. Uh, and we are going to continue to work to get more people vaccinated uh, to get out of this uh, pandemic. The President will use every lever at his disposal to do that. Ooh, yeah, about that. The president doesn't make any laws, actually. So let's talk about vaccine mandates. And I want to be real clear here. I'm talking about the mandates, not the actual vaccine itself, okay? So before you people on the left go freak out about this, as far as the mandate goes, you can screw right off, Joe Biden. It's not a law. You can't make it, and it's not even a law now. It's, it's like, this is my choice if and when I want to get this, and it is if, for, same for every individual. But you, you want to know something insane? I mean, this is absolutely insane. No one's talking about this. The Joe Biden vaccine mandate, it's never actually been imposed. It's not written. It's just nothing more than a press release and a speech. It's never been issued as an executive order. OSHA hasn't actually implemented any rule. There's no law requiring it anywhere. Congress didn't vote on it anywhere. Yet here we are. All these companies like lemmings off a cliff are making it their policy. So as you can see, this whole entire thing is just a scam. This mandate term is just a scam from the actual verbiage of how it's used and the Ill illegitimate Biden administration making a press conference announcing it, but then actually there, actually there is actually no legal framework to support this press conference. So it's not legally binding. So I'm not sure why all these companies, Southwest Airline, the military, uh, hospitals are imposing these type of illegal mandates on their employees when it's not official. It's just an announcement they were just saying. Okay, this is big. This is a big joke on their American people and their employers right now. So uh, 
the more people wise up to it, the more you are uniting and you're resisting, you're gonna tear down the system. It's already working, you know. You guys are doing, the Americans are doing one heck of a job fighting and everyone's uniting. So I'm, I really have to give them a big congratulation for their warrior spirit and not really rolling over and accepting these type of illegal uh, changes that's being imposed onto them. Moving on to the next talking point. Uh, in UK, a British MP, by the name of David Amos, 69 years old, was stabbed in broad daylight in a public meeting that he was attending. He was attending a constituents meeting and he was talking to his constituents and a 25 year old male stabbed him to death. So this is really scary information I'm sharing with you, but it's actually information that's gonna really shake up these politicians because they have been living in this illusion that everything they've been doing with uh, making these illegal laws, imposing it on the people, removing people's free will and force vaccinating people's kids and making people lose their job, it's gonna have a consequence. And right now we can see the consequence being played out that these politicians are no longer safe walking on the street. Uh, they're not even safe attending a work function that they were supposed to attend he was stabbed in broad daylight and it's not only sending a clear message in the uk in the in the politicians in in the uk but it's also making the canadian politicians all very afraid as well too uh there's been an increase uh number of violence and attacks you know that justin trudeau was pelted rocks when he was campaigning people have had enough with him and there's just overall a general change in people's attitude and energy with these politicians and what they've been doing. It's just the whole entire system is rigged, it's corrupt. They're not really listening to the will of the people. They are public servants, but they're acting like they are uh, their boss. They're acting like they are in charge and they're, they don't have anybody to answer to. So this, this attack is sending a message to these MPs and to these shady, corrupt politicians that they need to remember their job and their place in society, that they are public servants. They were elected to do a job for the people. The people are the ones that have the real power and authority. And right now, this individual, this 25 year old, exercised his authority and decided to just, you know, end this politician's uh, career, essentially. Uh, so right now, the tides are turning. The government is becoming afraid of the people, rightfully so, which is how it should be. The people should not be afraid of the government. It should be the other way around, that the government should be afraid of the people. So we're going to see how this is going to play out when more and more Britons start to wake up and you know become more fearless because they've had enough with the, with this type of tyranny and I don't think they're going to be taking it anymore because the, the Britons are kind of rowdy like they're Americans. They're not, very, they're not passive like the Canadians and the Australians. So the, the Britons are quite rowdy and they're not afraid to take certain actions. Other people in uh, Canada and Australia, they're still vibrating the fear frequency and they're not willing to take action even though they're witnessing what is going on. They're opposing it, but they're not really standing up. So this one individual, even though he's very young, 25 years old, making this type of statement, what I can see is it's going to lead to other people taking very drastic actions because here's a person that's not really afraid of the consequences. He's very upset with what's going on in his country and he's willing to do something about it. And he's not really afraid of the consequences. And there's going to be a lot of people, young people in his shoes that are going to feel the same way. Okay, so these politicians who are doing this, implementing the NWO and the Mark of the Beast system, they are putting their life and their family's life at risk, and I don't think uh, it's worth it. Okay, now moving on to the next talking point. I want to share with you the update situation in Italy right now uh, with the Green Pass implementation, basically the Mark of the Beast implementation. The Italian pork workers from uh, Trieste and Mont Falcone have issued an ultimatum basically they said that if this mark of the beast green pass is not removed by october 30th they're going to bring down the entire country they're not going to go to work they're going to refuse to go to work and this is actually a major news for eu because this port 
75% of the cargo traffic is made out of oil. So if they are going to be refusing to go to work, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be a halt in the import of oil to all of EU, which is going to have a devastating effect in EU. A lot of countries rely on this flow of oil into Italy so they can get their fuel. So if, if this goes down, this is going to be major disaster, not only in Italy, but all of EU that has that is dependent on this oil. So uh, the, well, this is a really good move, what the Italians are doing, but for the people in the rest of Europe who is dependent on oil and gas, you might want to now just stock up in case if the government does not remove this mark of the beast implementation and they're going to move forward with it, just be prepared in case any of that stuff happens, okay? It's better be prepared than unprepared, essentially, okay? Now, moving on to the next talking point. I want to share with you a clip in Melbourne, Australia of the matrix collapsing. All the shops have been closed, businesses are out of business. For lace, 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 for lace. That's closed down, that's for lace, all that's for lace. That looks pretty for lace as well. Oft. I want to share with you another clip in Australia of the police brutality, the corruption, the injustice that's happening in Australia. Here's a man just having a cigarette, minding his own business, doing his own thing. And they're coming out in like these gangs and they're just terrorizing the people. I want to share this clip so that way the Australians as well as the Canadians are understanding the, the severity of the situation they're in and they need to really rise up. So I want to share with you this clip first before I, I say my commentary. So here's the clip. Both girls. I literally am standing here eating my kebab. All right, this isn't no, not all right. How are you meant to calm down when people are doing this? No, we saw we saw your friend up here earlier on. He doesn't. We've been pushing to move on, and he's he's so. He lives 500 meters that yeah, way. When you guys check that, that it's going to be really I'm awkward. I'm not going to argue with you. So, so what? Okay, can I ask what he's been doing? Watch me. So, Watch me. So, what? Come over here. No, I'm fine here. Thank you. You can explain it here. What's happened earlier on is we've seen your friend. You can explain that. It's not necessary. And we're giving a direction to move on. I understand and that. Return. He's not returning his own. He lives. He lives a block away. Yeah, but he has no. So what do you mean? He has no reason to be here. He doesn't have a valid reason to be out today. He wasn't wearing a face mask. Hold on. He has a face mask in his pocket. He was just smoking a cigarette. He just came to get lunch with me. Oh, what do you mean? I've been living here this whole time. What do you mean? Oh, you can be recorded, please. We're currently under arrest for breaching the chief health officer. I live with him. I live two hundred metres up the road. We're all going for a walk. I've gone to meet my friends, which I told your friends I before. I literally have food in my hand. Kebab, and we're going for a walk. And the reason I didn't a mask on because I was having a cigarette. I've got two masks in my pocket. Like, what else do you want me to do? Oh, pretty much. Do so you want to grab your mask out? Oh, can you get... What do you mean by it's fine? If it's because he's not wearing it... Okay, you don't need to touch me, though, because if we're meant to be... You don't need to join in. I'm going to get the same right here and don't move in there, right? Listen. No, no, no. My lawful directions are going to be for you to move on, otherwise you're going to be arrested as well. Listen, I know you don't want to do this. We don't. It's fucking horrible. It's horrible. Don't get involved. Don't get involved. What do you mean? This is my mate. I stand in here. You don't. I understand your concerns. This is horrible. No, no, I do. He's my friend. We're fucking walking through the park with food. Take a couple steps back. For what? For breaching the I'm for breaching what? No, let me finish. Go for it. I'm trying to process an offender and you're in the way of the police doing that. Stand there and continue to, continue to film. That's great. Happy days. Sure. Well, excuse me. We're, we're filming as well, so. Yeah, great. Take your spice. Take your spice. I've, I've stood here the whole time. So don't step, take a step forward. We've asked you to step back. Hey, Broody, where are we going? Oh, I'm calling for processing group. Yeah, where are, you, where are you going? Because I'll come up. Sorry, I don't trust this. It's As you can see from this clip, this is harassment, intimidation, police brutality, and corruption. What they're doing is completely illegal, and they have no jurisdiction to do what they're doing. Australians are facing this, as well as the Canadians. Why are they not rising up? Why are they not setting boundaries and signing up for themselves? This is part of your spiritual initiation. These two countries are operating at a very low state of consciousness, which is 3D victimhood consciousness. 
And the more you remain in this 3D victimhood consciousness, these bullies, these pedophile protectors, they're not going to stop. This is a part of your spiritual initiation from going from 3D to 4D states of consciousness and ultimately 5D states of consciousness. The people operating at 5D state of consciousness do not allow themselves to be bullied and attack them like this. You have, in order to remedy the situation, the first thing you need to do is first, the people have to unite. You, you can no longer operate in this individualistic frame of mind where you're going there alone, you're sitting alone, and you're eating with groups of two people and three people. You see these cops are going in groups of like five, six, seven, eight people in groups because they know if they go alone, they're gonna get their butt kicked. Like in this video, I'm gonna share with you, okay? There's a lot of tension in the air in Australia. People do not like cops, and if they go alone, they're gonna get beat up like this video, and the, like this person in this video. The people in Australia, in order to pass the spiritual initiation, you need to change your conscious. You can no longer operate in this 3D victimhood consciousness. If you remain in this frequency, they're gonna, the NWO is just gonna take over and you're not gonna be able to resist. Understand that this is all dependent on the people and how they choose to react to the situation. Earth is the toughest spiritual school. Only the bravest souls incarnate into this planet. Okay, it is the toughest because it's the, it is the one of the lowest in vibration, the lowest in its frequency that was allowed to ex experience such a separation from source. And as a result, this planet was uh, invaded and infiltrated by these malevolent forces. And these malevolent forces, they are bully. You are the students, you are, you are spiritual students, spiritual souls on this planet having a, a spiritual experience for you to learn more about yourself and for you to learn how to ascend to become the 5d version of yourself and these bullies have come into this planet and they're just bullying you they're just attacking you they're taking away your rights you're taking away your freedom they're taking away everything that you hold dear to your heart and you're not making any type of move to resist this type of attack i'm not sure if people have ever had the experience of fighting off bullies but I have. And if you don't stand up against bullies, they're just going to keep on attacking you. They're going to pummel you and attack you and keep and take, take, take because you haven't set boundaries. And this is what's happening in Australia. The people are too passive. They're too afraid. They don't unite. They don't stand up. You cannot fight this, this satanic group alone. They are working as a brotherhood. They are working together in unison as a cult. Therefore, the people need to stop with their individualistic mind frame and unite as a collective like what you see happening in france in italy in america in russia this is these are the countries that are actually leading the way as well as brazil as well as hong kong these are the countries they want to take examples from and follow because they have been very successful at resisting this NWO implementation. But if you remain in this victimhood consciousness, this 3D lower vibration of fear and being separated from each other instead of uniting as a brotherhood, as being a collective, you're gonna fall. You're gonna fall to the cabal. And there is nobody coming in to save. I mean, you, you have to get out of that savior consciousness. You are your own saviors. I mean, there are people thinking that the Alliance is gonna come in and rescue them. The Alliance is there to actually rescue the children that are helpless. The people have to do their own saving. The people have to rescue themselves from their own government. This is not the job of the Alliance. The, the Alliance is there to rescue the children. The Alliance is there to blow up the domes and do what they have to do. Take down the MSM, the mainstream media, but to rescue every single group of collective from their government, this is really up to the people. I mean. This is your job. The government is made of the people, right? Therefore, you have that power. You have the authority to take over the government and restore what it what is rightfully belonging to you, which is your rights, your your sovereignty, your authority. These are just public servants, and they they shouldn't be making these type of tyrannical laws that are removing all of your authority and violating all type of universal laws. So, when I make that commentary, so that way the people in Australia are, are getting this message that in order for them to change their situation, it is a change in consciousness. It is a change in consciousness in you seeing the situation that you're not helpless. 
you're not victims of these circumstances. You have the power to stop all of this by just simply uniting, fighting back, resisting back, like how you see the Americans are doing. You know, if, if, they, if employers are making you take the vaccine or to, to have this COVID pass in order to have the job, all of you just stop going to work. If they impose this pass for you to go into the mall, do what the Russians do. No one goes to the mall no more. You know, they, they completely abandon the mall, just quit going to the mall. You gotta do this type of collective action. This is how you're gonna take down the system. But the more separate you are, you're not gonna achieve anything because the cabal is very organized, they're very structured, and they act like a brotherhood. So the people have to behave the same. You all have to unite together and take collective action, and you're gonna find a lot of success. You don't need to be all afraid, separated, like how it is right now. You won't be accomplishing anything with this state of consciousness. So I hope this message gets to the right people and they're taking collective action to unite, find people that they are having things in common with and fight for their freedom and fight for their life, okay? Moving on to the next talking point, some great news. The FDA has just recently been sued by a group of highly accredited scientists. They're suing the FDA for the data that they're relying on to license Pfizer's Mark of the V shot. The FDA has made a lot of statements and promises to the public saying that they are committed to full transparency with regard to the Mark of the Beast shot. They have been reaffirming that they are committed to this transparency. However, when it comes to actually providing the documentation and the data, there is none. Zilch, nada. So what the scientists had to do, and they are all from all various types of university, they have filed a lawsuit against the FDA for the immediate release of this information because according to federal law in the US, once a product becomes licensed, you're actually supposed to release this information anyways. But so here we have the FDA violating federal law, not actually providing the transparency that they have been promising and they're blatantly just lying to the public. They are a public funded institution, so they, they have responsibility to answer to the public. So this is amazing news that finally the FDA is being sued. And I'm happy to see that a group of scientists have band together, have united as a collective and fighting this corrupt institution. Moving on to the next talking point, I want to share with you a clip from Stu Peter's uh, broadcast of a pilot dying in mid flight uh, from Delta Airline. Here's the clip just share with you a breaking story that I've had corroborated now from three separate whistleblowers re directly related to Delta Airlines. Uh, a pilot died in flight within the last, I'd say, 10 days, according to these sources. The co-pilot told uh, the flight attendant that the captain was speaking normally one moment, then uh, 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 said a few weird things and, and then died. The, uh, the flight had to make an emergency landing. We are now learning this is an LAX-based captain, uh, and they did land the plane safely. I'm not sure what they told the passengers on board. The co-pilot also shared with the flight attendant, who was one of the three whistleblowers, uh, that uh, the pilot who died had told the co-pilot that he had, uh, just several days prior, completed his second shot in this series. So we want people to know. And, and Stu, I have to tell you that one of the three whistleblowers shared with me some information it's much bigger than people think and it is exactly what you and i have been suspicious of since the beginning we knew these numbers were much bigger than what uh the media was uh, reporting or not reporting listen to this uh this is what's going on right now in your skies flight flights are diverted for pilots with chest pains flight was a uh, recent flight was diverted for a 30 year old vaxxed male passenger who had chest pains and an inability to breathe so it's not just your captains that can you know get sick and maybe you know have a a, a problem with the airplane thank god that co-pilot could could emergency land it uh and and get the you know get the pilot off the flight. A Seattle-based pilot was found dead on his floor at home from an embolism. Uh, pilots and flight attendants right now in droves, in addition to everything you described, are not returning to active duty after the shot, uh, various unspecified adverse reactions. Um, two Atlanta-based flight attendants were found dead at home a few days after the second shot. Uh, and seven, listen to this, Stu, seven Atlanta-based flight attendants have had uh, breakthrough infections, which is not a, a surprise to us. One Atlanta-based pilot who was vaxxed, so to speak, with both shots uh, got a breakthrough infection and died from kidney failure after being put on remdesivir. And a Salt Lake City ramp agent uh, and part-time firefighter died in his sleep three days after getting his second shot. 
another, and just in conclusion here, another Salt Lake City flight attendant, base manager, died after his second J and J, J shot. He was personal supervisor uh, to a number of, of flight attendants and was a total gym rat, 47 years old, in perfect health. So this is terrible news to hear that a pilot died after his second shot and this has all been swept under the rug. Thank God we have whistleblowers coming out and approaching Stu Peters with this type of information or else the public would not even heard about this type of news. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think people should be really flying during this time because there's so many uncertainties going around and a lot of these pilots are taking the jab and they are at risk again blood clots in midair because of the pressurized cabin, right? So it's not very safe for people to fly right now. And they're putting themselves at risk when they're boarding these aircraft. So I, I wouldn't suggest people to fly. Please ground yourself as much as you can. Uh, avoid flights because it's just not worth it. If this pilot died in mid-flight and then we have a, luckily another pilot that was able to land there, the aircraft safely, imagine if both pilots died on, on, on their aircraft. It could happen, you know, because blood cuts are very common uh, with people who have taken the shot. And when you're in an environment where everything is pressurized, it, it can happen. It can trigger a blood clot and both pilots could have some serious side effects. So it's not, I don't think, you know, the loss of time, the loss of convenience, and the loss of energy and money, it's just not, and as well as the experience, it's just a horrible experience right now to go fly. So I don't think it's worth it for people to fly. That's just my, my take. Moving on to the next talking point. You know, with the mandate that Southwest Airlines implemented on their 56,000 staff, it's cost them $1.2 billion in net loss from July to September. This is this was the biggest loss this company has suffered. It's no surprise to me because we, we all saw this coming. I mean, if you're gonna be imposing this type of uh, mandate on people's lives and you're forcing people to choose between their life and their job, a lot of people are becoming more awakened to this shot and they're gonna choose their life over a job and they're gonna just switch career and go into a different field. So this situation has backfired on Southwest Airlines in a major way, causing them to lose thousands of customers. They had to cancel over 2,200 flights. They've lost millions in these few short days, and now their company have lost 1.2 billion in the last uh, third quarter. The, these are massive losses for the airline industry. I mean, Southwest Airlines is not the company that's posting massive losses. Uh, American Airlines is doing the same. Uh, we all saw this company. I mean, the, the, the matrix is collapsing. Airline industry is collapsing. The hospitals are, are collapsing. The military is collapsing. A lot of systems that have been created, the infrastructure of this matrix is totally collapsing. We're witnessing the collapse of the matrix happening in real time. So it's very exciting, but it's also kind of scary for a lot of people because, um, you know, their jobs are on the line, their lives are on the line, they're being forced and or coerced to take a shot that they don't want to take. But, you know, stay to your values, stay true to what you believe in, expand your consciousness, learn a new skill. You can always switch jobs, find a new job to take care of yourself and your family. But once you take that mark of the beast system, that's it. You know, your soul is harvested. You're never going to be able to ascend. You're going to be keeping and cycling and other 3D plants that is controlled by the cabal and your soul will never escape this matrix. So these people who have traded their soul for the illusion of freedom, the illusion of financial stability or whatever illusion they bought into, they don't understand how severe the loss is and they will never understand actually because they don't have that level of awareness and it's just really sad. They have no idea what they have lost. Move on to the next talking point. The countries that are in very 3D states of consciousness in these lower vibration timeline where the NWO is in control of the population. I suggest the people in my audience to watch this video, how to change the world, because it's gonna give you a lot of spiritual knowledge to change your situation. Your circumstances is not permanent. It can be changed, you have a role in your co-creation, you have a role in changing timeline. And that video is gonna give you some very powerful tips and information on how you can change your reality and switch timeline. It all boils to you understanding 
the nature of reality, how reality is actually constructed and how it works. Basically how it works is this, in order for you to change the world that you're living in, you actually don't change your external environment. You don't change the outside, but you make the change on the inside. You, be you become a new version of yourself, another version of yourself by leveling up. And as a result of you leveling up, you actually change timeline from the old 3D vibration to another vibration that you're now operating in. We are all living in parallel realities right now, all coexisting at the same time in the here and now. Proof of that is that my reality is very different from your reality. You know that for a fact that your reality is not the same as my reality because our experiences are totally different. That should give you an indication that it, that is a parallel reality. On top of that, when you're paying attention or observing a country or another collective, it does not mean that you are a part of that reality. You're merely observing it. Therefore, you're actually viewing another parallel reality. So this is more clues and indication that we're all living in parallel realities right now. And in, and in order for you to change your, your reality, you make the change within your consciousness. And your consciousness is made out of the four main bodies, your physical body, your mental body, your emotional body, and your etheric body, your spiritual body, okay? You need to make the change within yourself in order to hold a different vibration and then you switch from different planets to another planet. I do this now at a conscious level. This is the reason why I know this teaching works because I do this at a conscious level where I have full control of the reality that I, I am experiencing. And if I don't like the reality, I make the change in my conscious, correct the actions that need to be corrected in order for me to have a different experience. So I suggest people who are living in these very dark uh, timelines, Australia and Canadians, to check out the video. The video was done two years ago. It's on my YouTube platform. It should be on Odyssey and it should be also on UGE tube as well too. It's a very important video. So that way you can implement the teaching in your current reality so you can make the shift into a different timeline, okay? Now, moving on to the next talking point. I've made some videos about twin flames, but I talked mainly about twin flames that came here with their partner. So there, there's some twin flames that made some comments on my video saying that they would like me to discuss this twin flame journey, but, but for twin flames who have incarnated here being solo. So I wanna share with you that information so that way the Twin Flame Collective that are here solo don't feel so lost and confused because this journey is quite confusing. It's complicated, it's traumatic, it's lonely, and you could easily lose faith, you lose hope in this mission when you actually don't understand the bigger picture and all this, okay? So I'm gonna go right into discussing the Twin Flames journey for the, for the solo ones. The ones that are incarnating this planet by themselves, your twin flame counterpart is in the 5D and they're there guiding you and helping you on your twin flame journey. And the reason why you have incarnate here alone instead of having your, your counterpart is because the traumas you are transmuting for the collective are a different set of trauma compared to the couple's twin flame. Usually the themes that the single twin flame come in here to transmute are you are childhood rapes abandonment usually they're they've been orphaned when they're when they're a baby addictions bullying attacking by members of their family but this is also a very common in in couple twin flames as well too loneliness isolation also a common theme in couple twin flames trust issues communication issues uh, expressing your feelings and your your emotions because you tend to be all ball they, they tend to bottle up all their feelings and emotion they're afraid of being vulnerable authentic uh, their life is full of trauma and abuse and as a result they, they have a life that is they feel is worthless without purpose without direction and they're often riddled with a lot of pseudocidal thoughts so the, the themes that the, the, the solo twin flame have come in here to transmute are very, very dark, dense uh, trauma that they're trying to heal for the collective, for that bloodline. And that's part of their mission. This is the reason why they, they have come here alone because their transmutation uh, and their healing work is different from the, from the couple's 
uh, twin flame. The couple's twin flame is more about being in a toxic relationship, being in a relationship where one is being the abuser, one is being disrespected and used and abused. And sometimes it's also a third party karmic situation where the, the couple twin flame is trying to transmute this type of toxicity for the collective. So now that we can understand why the solo twin flame is all alone and they're here on their mission, you can have a deeper appreciation that the work you're doing is big spiritual work. I mean, you were chosen. You are the chosen one by God. You have to understand that you are very, very spiritually gifted. You're very high ranking in the spiritual hierarchy. You have a direct connection to source. You're the first fractal from source, basically. When, when source decided to split itself, the, the twin flame collective was the first fractal in the splitting. So this is the reason why this flint, the twin flame collective are such powerful old souls because they have been around for a very long time and they have that direct connection to source. So you were chosen, you were hand picked by God for this mission because of your unique abilities, for your strength. Uh, you know, there were a lot of volunteers for this mission, but God selected you for this mission because of all these abilities and these strengths that you have, which made you the perfect candidate for this mission. And God selected the best of the best, basically. Only the best of the best, the strongest, the wisest, the most powerful twin flames were sent to this planet because it is the most densest and darkest planet of all the multiverse. So you are very much valuable. And a lot of these twin flames, they have issues of self-worth. They have issues with self-love. They, they really think they're worthless. They're, they think their life is worthless because it's just riddled with a lot of like chaos and loss and trauma and, and abuse. This is the whole entire life. It's just chaos, loss, trauma, abuse, and addiction. There's no love. They've never experienced true love. They've never experienced what love feels like. You know, for the single twin flame, they're just, they're, they've been raped. They've been abused by members of their family. They've been abused uh, by society, in school, at work. So the, the whole entire life is just abuse, trauma, and abuse, victimhood consciousness. The same goes for the, for the, the twin flames in the, in the couple dynamic. They have their own set of traumas as well, too. And together, these twin flames are healing these traumas for the collective to help the collective change the vibration, to change the frequency of the planet, essentially. Because these twin flames, they have very strong intensity and, and energy. What they do in their surrounding area, it lifts the entire vibration of that area. This is the reason why twin flames are placed in very strategic location where they're isolated, they don't have friends, they don't have family. It's because they're doing the cleaning work for that location. They're in the most densest area and they're doing a lot of the, the cleaning work for that location to raise the vibration of the planet so they can anchor in the new vibration. So whatever the twin flame is going through, you have to be very cognizant of your state of vibration because if you're in low vibration, you're injecting all these intensity, all these low vibration right into the planet. And the planet is reliant on the twin flames energy to stay alive because they have a, they hold a tremendous amount of energy within their energy field and once they anchor that energy into the planet it you know it really gives the planet a jolt of energy this is what helped the planet to stay alive after the two world war you know according to Dor Dolores Cannon if it wasn't for the twin flame coming here in droves incarnating to this planet this planet was on its way out it was going to die because of the atomic bombs and the mass death on this planet this planet was suffering great loss and devastation it was it was on its way out so that's that's goes to show to you the 104,000. this is how much energy they hold in each one of them so it's their mission to really work on themselves uh, the problem with the twin flame collective is that they're so focused on finding their love if, if they're a solo twin flame they're trying to find their their love, their true love. And if they're in a relationship, they're always obsessing on their partner instead of actually focusing on themselves. Because their mission here is actually to heal themselves, to become healers, to become master healers, to learn all the lessons from their trauma so that way they can share this knowledge to the collective. So one of the main missions of these twin flame is to 
heal and enlighten. So once you step into your role, this is what you become. You become spiritual leaders. You become beacons of light where you're helping people overcome their childhood trauma, very severe childhood trauma, and moving to becoming the divine version of self. The Twin Flame Collectives are the first to ascend because they have already gone through this ascension journey. They know how to ascend because they are ascended beings themselves and they're coming in here to go through this ascension journey again and once they have ascended become divine version themselves then they're teaching this information to the collective to prepare the collective for ascension so really their true mission here is planetary ascension it's not about being in love with your other partner that's just if you really focus on trying to find love and be with another person you've lost track of your mission you've lost focus of what you're here and it's not about that if you really want to find love you need to first find love within yourself you need to learn to have a relationship first with yourself find divine love within yourself and once you're at that place of completion and finding divine love within yourself then you're going to be finding divine love in your counterpart. this is how it works okay so if you're if you're a solo twin flame hopefully this information i'm sharing with you is going to give you a lot of clarity in what your mission is i have outlined the seven steps in my twin flame video but i'm going to share with you again so that way you understand that you have a big mission okay and the more you focus on other people and try to chase love you're you're losing sight of what your mission is you have a soul purpose you have spiritual gifts you came in here with and many of you have not even tapped into those gifts you're not even utilizing it so the seven steps i'm going to share with you again first is healing Two is learning to unconditionally love oneself and other unconditionally. Three, learning to set healthy boundaries for yourself so that way you have self-preservation. Four is developing in your intuition and psychic abilities because twin flames are highly, highly empathic and psychic. So you have this ability naturally. You're supposed to develop it and then share it with the collective and teach them how to become very psychic and empathic themselves. Five is balancing your divine masculine and divine feminine energy because you're supposed to become this divine version of yourself in the physical source is waiting to express itself for you. So the more you are living in this poverty, victimhood conscious, the more you're further away from your mission. Okay. And then seventh is living your divine purpose and living your divine pur purpose means that you are following your heart. You're following your intuition is guiding you you have a certain destiny to fulfill you have a soul contract with the spiritual or hierarchy that you're supposed to fulfill therefore if you follow your intuition you follow your heart it's going to lead you to accomplishing your destiny which is usually really really big okay the, the divine usually have very big massive plans for these twin flame they're here to do big spiritual work so hopefully this information is going to help uh, many twin flames that are here isolated alone they have no family they have no love they have no friends they have no community they're they are truly isolated so i understand their pain and their frustration but that just tells you that you need to put all that energy back into yourself you need to start loving yourself changing your frequency healing yourself and then your reality starts changing as a result of you changing your consciousness and you changing your frequency. I know this from experience because I have been doing this for myself for the past, I would say five years now, four or five years on this twin flame journey. Uh, like many of these twin flames, I did feel loneliness. I did feel isolated because I was going through a divorce. I was also going through this terrible toxic twin flame connection where i was put in third party situation i have no family where i'm at i have very few friends i'm in a you know remote area at that time where i was living not really remote but it was very isolated i didn't have many things going on in that area you were surrounded by nature but then there's not a lot of activity going on and plus i was not in my home too that makes a big difference so i understand the isolation and the loneliness but what I learned from that experience is that I didn't have that much self-love for myself at the time. And now I'm in a different state of consciousness where I've channeled all that energy, all that time and all that resource back into myself. And as a result, I no longer feel this type of vibration, loneliness and isolated and, you know, just out of balance with myself. I'm at a different state where I, I feel grounded. I'm very happy. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm abundant. You know, my work is helping a lot of people 
make an impact in their life. So there's a lot of things that have changed in my reality, but that's due to me doing the inner work and changing my consciousness. This is the reason why I know this work is very, very important for the Twin Flame Collective because once you step into your role doing what you're supposed to do, you are extremely powerful. You have a huge impact on the collective conscious. And that's what you're supposed to be doing. You're here to be beacons of light. You're here to work with a spiritual hierarchy and help this planet ascend. This is really the, 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 the main goal of Twin Flames is planetary ascension. So um, hopefully many of these Twin Flame will understand their role and their mission and they have a deeper appreciation because a lot of these Twin Flames that I have connected to, they are just really lost. They're just confused. They hate their life. They're very suicidal. They just want to leave. They just want to leave this planet. They, they're like, why did I sign up for this mission? It's just absolutely horrible what I'm going through. I have no love. I never find the right partner. I'm always abused. I'm in toxic relationships. I've been abused by my family, people that look, that are supposed to be there for me, and then, or I've been abandoned by, by them. I'm, I'm orphaned. And they have very serious addiction problem. Smoking too much cannabis, drinking too much alcohol, pharmaceuticals, whatever the addiction is, it doesn't matter. But I want to give you an insight on the addiction. Each addiction means that you have entity attachment in your etheric body. That's where the addictions come from because they influence you through your ego and uh, through the weaknesses that you have because you have imbalances in your body. And then this is the reason why you're addicted to whatever substance you, you are addicted to, whether it's sex, food, alcohol, drugs, pharmaceutical, whatever it is, the addiction is. It is a form of entity attachment and it can be solved by self-love. Now, many of these twin flames, they live very sad, miserable lives. Um, they're very stuck in where they're at. They hate where they're at. And their lives are a result of a series of decisions they make in their life, okay? All of our life, okay, ba basically. Where you are in your life is a result of decisions you make in your life. And if you make really poor decisions in your life, it's going to lead to a life of you being stuck, you, you not being happy, you being really disconnected from spirituality, you not having the type of success, victory that you're wishing for because the decisions you make in, you made in your life. So I've had to learn on my journey of just waking up and getting out of this matrix and this ascension journey and this twin flame journey, I had to learn how to make really wise decisions for myself. Nobody taught me this, these skill set. Nobody taught me these lessons because we've not, we're not really taught this. So I had to figure it out for myself how to make really good decisions. And a person who have their life together, who's successful, who's abundant, who's blessed, who have, um, you know, fame, money, uh, health, wealth, whatever it is that you, that you think that is the total package, whatever you, you consider it to be successful life. These people, their life did not come into like that based on random coincidences. There's no such thing as coincidence in the multiverse. Everything happens for a reason. And these people who have very successful lives or victorious lives, they have learned to make very good decisions in their life. And as a result, there are effects from you making bad decisions and versus good decisions, right? So I made a video in my membership area where I am sharing my knowledge on how I have learned to make very good decisions in my life in order to be in a place where I am right now, where I am happy with my lifestyle, where I'm happy with what I'm doing. I am emotionally mature, independent, financially independent. I have a lot of things going on for me that I'm happy about and my life is filled with victories. And that's the different states. And that's the result of the difference in states of conscious. You know, if you choose to operate in a 3D, 4D state of conscious, you're going to be making decisions from the state of conscious. And then as a result of this state of conscious, it usually uh, results in loss and chaos and toxicity. But if you change your consciousness and you learn how to make wise and sound decisions for yourself, you change your frequency and now you learn to make better decisions for yourself. And as a result, you gain more victories. You have more success. You have more abundance. You have more blessings. This because you've learned from your mistakes. Okay. So that's what I want to share with people that you ultimately have a lot more control in your life than you think. There are many twin flames who think that they're absolutely victims of their reality. They can't seem 
they can't seem to win, they can't seem to get a break, it's because of the decisions they make. And sometimes if they make a really poor decision, they draw a lot of karma uh, onto themselves, and as a result, they have to repay that karmic debt. So there are consequences for you making bad decisions and hurting other people, or stealing, lying, that kind of stuff, right? So you want to make sure that you learn the fundamentals and learn making good decisions. That way you can change your reality and you know how to shift timelines and you know how to have more success and victories in your life and you can get unstuck. If you're in a place where you feel very stuck in your life, it means you have to change your entire consciousness. It means your actions, your feelings, your thoughts, as well as your belief. When you change all this in totality, then your reality changes, okay? Everything you need to know for transformation, for ascension, for healing yourself and having the life that you want is in my membership area. This is the reason why I've been called to put up that membership area so I can share this knowledge to the collective so they can use this knowledge and implement and make this transformation for themselves, okay? So what, with that, I want to leave you. Uh, I want to thank you for tuning into this broadcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for your time and attention, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.